All right, Troy, let's take a look at your paper. We'll see if your speech skills have transferred over to essay writing skills. MLA format first, so we're going to want a space between your name and page number. This is all good. 10 is needs to go first, which remember, you're supposed to put the date that you handed it in, so it should say 17 October 2016. Jumping off the deep end, it's not a bad title for, for what you're about to go through. So you start with a quote, which is good. Um, something I want to point out to you, which you're going to see this a couple times. You have three periods at the end of this sentence. So no period here, no period here, period here. Um, and we haven't gone over this in our packet yet for punctuation, but this will be brackets around this. So you can't have quotes with, or parentheses within parentheses. you got to do brackets within parentheses. Um, but uh, you have way too many periods at the end. So you start off with this quote. What are you supposed to do after a really good attention getting first statement? You're supposed to expand on it. Okay. Now, don't jump right into the character because you haven't even introduced the play yet till down here. So start off with something else. Kind of explain this quote a little bit. Try to, you know, get a sense for what it means and then jump into in Shakespeare's play, Macbeth um, shows these symptoms as he tries to free himself from blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. You got some punctuation things that we need to talk about and some sentence structure we need to talk about. No comma here whatsoever. Macbeth cannot seem to free himself from the insanity bipolar disorder has caused him. There's no pause there at all. So you don't need a comma there. Um, you know, punctuation here, obviously, you have too many periods at the end there. Um, this is a sentence fragment. Once you make it a complete sentence, you don't need a comma here. Remember, you only use a comma conjunction when you have two complete sentences on either side. Um, so figure that out. Here's what I'm not exactly... I, I feel like this is too much about the disorder and not about how Macbeth has it. So I would love to see more... You know, Macbeth has it. Here's what the disorder is. Here's how um, Macbeth reacts in the play. Here's the symptoms he has, which you're kind of not even getting into at this point. Um, so, I mean, you are listing symptoms, but you don't talk about that the reader can observe. Uh, I mean, I'd even be more specific with that. What I do like is your thesis statement. I think you have a really good thesis statement, and I'm hoping that throughout the uh, throughout the uh, paper that you really build on that thesis statement. All right, so hallucinations um, were a driving factor. Uh, this is, I mean, adding something like this is um, a really good voice. Make sure your period goes inside the quote there, though. Uh, use a definition from dictionary.com. Why not use it from a medical dictionary so I know medically how hallucinations work? Uh, you weren't the only one to do that, uh, but try to use a medical dictionary instead. So you use the floating dagger thing. Um, you have a run-on sentence here that you need to fix. So you use the uh, quote about um, this. And, and you talked about him being bloodthirsty and um, a bloodthirsty monster. Bring up this concept here. Don't just say they were the main reasons he went crazy. You know, he talks about blood specifically. What does that mean? And that's that's what I was talking about. You have a really good thesis statement. Build off the concept of being bloodthirsty. Build off that concept. And you get into it here. I think using this quote is a really good quote to use, and we'll come back to it later. But go further than just that was the main reason it went crazy. You have a run-on sentence here. Um, you, It's almost like you meant this to be one continuous sentence, but it doesn't make sense. Um, so fix this. You use the the. I'm not going to process the name right. Guy de Montpassant. Um, I think it's Guy actually. Guy de Montpassant, um, which this is a really good quote too. But again, you need more than just this um, because basically all this is is um, your transition statement. Which from speech class, congratulations, you can do transition statements, which is awesome because a lot of your classmates can't. But you need another sentence here or two, really kind of wrapping that thesis back into your um, into your body paragraphs. Uh, I think you have a good start. I mean, you're you're using outside quotes, so on and so forth. But you just need to do more. All right, this is a, a better topic sentence. Um, but here's what I'll bring up, which we're going to go over this in class too. Is this really what your paragraph is about? Because this is mostly about guilt and we'll get into a couple different examples here in a bit but 
I don't know if that's really what this paragraph is about. I like that. I use the word feeling wired. That's really good voice, Troy, and that's more of what you need um, in your paper. Uh, the prophecy causes paranoia to skyrocket. I'd like you to explain that a little bit more. Um, because of the prophecy, he, he got paranoid. Um, I'm not exactly sure. You, you'll have to explain that a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to assume this is a direct quote, so it should be in quotations. And because it's, if it's in quotations, it should be separated. Um, and we'll talk about this in class. You, you um, enter, hit enter, and then tab over twice for this whole thing. Again, I want to see, I want to see a medical definition, not a dictionary.com. You use this whole quote, but how is it helping you explain anything um, in here? Okay, so his paranoia started right after he killed Duncan. You just got done telling me that his paranoia, the prophecy caused his paranoia to skyrocket. But then right after that, you say it started right after he killed Duncan, which is two different things. So in the same paragraph, you're telling me two different things. So you better get on the right page with that. So this would be a... This would be a uh, colon instead because you're introducing a quote. And I would argue, even before he says this, he's obviously feeling, gu feeling guilty about killing Duncan at this point. But why not use the quote when he looks at his hands and says, this is a sorry sight. That's a much better quote for feeling guilty. I just feel like that would be a better quote to use. Now, you talk about his paranoia getting worse, and I agree. But here is, I don't know what where you're coming from. This is the porter saying this. How do you how do you get that this <laughs> this explains Macbeth's paranoia? Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure where you went with that. That's obviously got to get out of there. Obviously, you made a little mistake here. Basically, at this point in the play, uh, can feel the reader uh, the reader can feel the craziness creep in on Macbeth. Um, so here's what you're doing. You're trying to add voice again, but I think this is taking away the tone. It's almost like becoming informal at this point uh, and then again with your thesis statement you're just repeating that he was bloodthirsty but I want to know how his paranoia caused that bloodthirstiness okay so go back through and really look at that um, no comma here the reckless behavior that followed didn't help his will to fight the paranoia um, so be careful on using using commas here so this paragraph is is your weakest so far um, this topic sentence is closer to what this paragraph is actually about um, and then explaining it so that's good you again use a quote from dictionary.com come on use a different one even if even if it was okay v Troy this is a good for college here even if the professor or whoever didn't care that you use a dictionary.com they would be upset that you went to the same source every time for all your information so I'm thinking the same thing as a as a teacher. I don't like that you went to the same source every time for all your information because, like anything, it's now one-sided. So, yes, it's a dictionary. I get that part. But um, just put it in context of being in college and thinking about a professor. All right. He begins to have anyone even remotely in his way killed. You love commas, Troy. No commas in here whatsoever. There's no, there's no reason to have any of them in there. Okay. So you, he ta you talk about that he's going to kill Macduff's family. Got a space issue here. No period here. Um, so you talk about him killing Macduff's family, which is fine. Um, now you say, oh, his reckless behavior caused him to crave power and blood. But I don't think you've explained that yet in this paragraph. You can't even begin to analyze this yet based on what you have up here. So I think you, you definitely need to explain more about what reckless behavior means the consequences, not even concerned about the consequences of some actions, okay? We'll go down here. Tell us why this was a really dumb move on his part, that he's not concerned about the consequences of his actions. Um, so you're not explaining enough in here to do that. Um, again, great transition. Uh, one thing you're doing really well, and one thing I'm glad you picked up from speech class. Um, now we get into sleepless nights. All right, so... We have, this is a really awkwardly worded sentence. Not sleeping alone can do enough damage to Macbeth. I, I get what you're saying. It's not just that he couldn't sleep, but because he had bipolar, it kind of 
you know personifies or accelerates this whatever but this is a really poorly worded sentence you can't use the word you uh, so make sure you get rid of that you have a definition I'm assuming that you got it from somewhere uh, let me guess dictionary.com uh, but you didn't cite it this time so this is technically plagiarism so think about this in college terms again Troy this is nearly automatic expulsion from college so make sure you understand that as you move forward alright so you have a um, quote here uh, which is probably one of the better quotes about sleep um, but it's four lines a it's probably too long B um, you can probably distill it down in just to a few words um, you know the death of each day's life um, you know Macbeth has quote lost the innocent sleep uh, something like that so uh, definitely work on this and if you are gonna keep this long a quote you better have a lot more than just this afterwards to explain it because this is the only outside support you have right now except for this which you didn't give credit to alright so you use this long quote then you say sleep is used as a bath of your sins again with the your and pains of the day so I like that by Macbeth not being able to sleep drove him more crazy so here we have a fragment sentence not sleeping double the effect of every other one of his symptoms this is not the proper use of a semicolon making his bloodthirsty grief for power even worse we're just repeating the thesis statement at this point um, so because he couldn't sleep I agree it actually personified some of his other problems or again accelerated some of his other problems so talk about maybe his sleeplessness causing him to make reckless decisions maybe his sleeplessness causing him some paranoia go back and kind of wrap all of these things together in here um, to show how they all sort of work together because you that's your topic sentence that it's not just sleep alone but um, but sleep uh, accelerates some of these other symptoms uh, so you really need to go back and see if you can make that work as a um, as a way to analyze that. Troy, I really do like your use of outside sources. I think it's really good. Um, but why not use this one in your hallucination um, paragraph? I thought that would be much better there. I think it kind of disrupts the flow of the, of the uh, conclusion. So you start with your thesis statement. Um, you go through and, and summarize each remaining body points, which is good. I love to see a little bit longer sentence, but that's okay. Um, I think this is a good quote. I would like a little bit more setup than, oh, this sums up Macbeth, because yes, it does, but I think you can be a little bit more specific with that. All right, so you never use this site. You never use this site in your in-text citation. Um, you don't need this at the beginning, but this what what you did to to put that in is correct. Um, you never use this as an in-text citation, so you definitely say you use these sites, but you never to put them in text, which is why it's called a works cited page. These are the things you're citing in your text, so you have to figure out where those things are and, and do that. All right, sorry for the long look at your paper, Troy, but I think there's a lot of great things that you're doing. Uh, organizationally, but just a lot more things you need to do analytically. So hopefully we'll see another draft out of you.